Hey, welcome to Rob Paints Models. Today we're going to be painting a Goliath Ganger from Necromunda. So the style I'm going with here is a kind of industrial look. I'm going with a, a primary color of orange, secondary of black, and a spot color of turquoise or teal to try and offset that orange color. Now I did this first set of base coats with an airbrush, but you can do it with a dry brush. And I did do it this way at first, but it just took a lot longer to build up the orange color. So I'm showing you the, the airbrush method. So I'm going to start by base coating all of the orange areas with Doom Bull Brown. This is a nice reddy brown, so it's going to create a good shadow color for us. The areas I'm airbrushing are going to be the chest plate, the belt, and the pants. If you want to paint the insides of the greaves orange or the insides of the um, ram braces orange, then you'd do that at this stage as well. I'm now going to do a zenithal highlight with Troll Slayer orange over the, all of the orange areas. You, doing it via airbrush here is much faster than doing it with a dry brush or with a paintbrush because it just goes on much smoother and covers much quicker for some reason. With a paintbrush, Troll Slayer orange is really translucent, but with an airbrush it's not so much. Now I'm going to use Fire Dragon Bright and I'm just going to hit some uh, areas of detail with that to highlight them and make them pop out. So around the knees, the tops of the thighs and the butt on the pants and the bottom of the chest plate. Now the final highlight's only going to be on the cloth areas and I'm going to be using Cadian Flesh Tone for this. I'm just doing this on the knees and the butt area in order to try and increase the appearance of wear. So next I'm going to base coat all of the black areas with VMA Panzer Dark Grey. Now I'm using the airbrush for this but there's a lot of areas where you can use um, for delineation on the uh, orange and black areas. For example, there's a belt around the middle which you can go up to pretty easily with an airbrush. I'm using a relatively low PSI and quite thin paint in order to be able to get a lot more control over this so you can see my squiggles in the background. Also pro tip, if you need to mask an area off quickly, blue tack, or in this case pink tack. So now I'm going to start by painting all of the black areas. Now the reason I'm doing this is because this is going to be a messy process and I want to have to do it before I have to clean everything up. So I'm going to start by dry brushing Administratum Grey over all of the black areas. Most of these black areas you can get the edge highlights with just a dry brush and we're going to tidy it up afterwards but this is just a much faster method than doing all edge highlights on everything and you get most of the way there. Now I'm going to go back in with some Panzer Dark Grey and I'm going to tidy up the areas where I don't want that dry brush. So for example on the flat areas it usually picks up a little bit of the dry brushing. I can just go back in, touch that up and it looks basically like an edge highlight. Um, for all of the painting on this model I'm using a Rosemary & Co Series 33 Size 1. I pretty much don't switch away from that for the entire model. So now I'm going to take some Administratum Grey and anywhere where I want a nice bright edge highlight I'm going to put one in with that. Um, it's mostly just on flat surfaces, the grenade launcher, the tops of the knee pads, the tops of the elbow pads for example, down the size of some of the straps and a little bit on the shoes. It's not very much and it, without the dry brush it would have taken a lot longer. Now I'm going to take some bad and Black and I'm going to thin this down to a glaze consistency and I'm just going to glaze in some shadows on the black areas, mostly just on the grenade launcher but also down the middle of the straps on the shoulders. So as you can see I'm just glazing this into the areas that I want a little bit darker. I'm not going for a non-metallic metal look here, I just you know want to give it a bit more of a three-dimensional shape.
Now once that's done, I'm gonna take some null oil and I'm gonna wash all of those black areas. I'm gonna try and make sure it's not on the flat surfaces while I shaded it uh, carefully with glazes. But anywhere where there's lots of folds and recesses, little nooks, the null oil is gonna create a nice kind of ambient occlusion effect going on there, which will make the uh, three-dimensionality of the objects pop much better. I'm also gonna apply this onto the metal orange areas, such as the chest plate and the belt. So to start with, I'm gonna highlight all of the orange areas with Cadian Flesh Tone. So this is just gonna be an edge highlight. I'm just picking up the raised surfaces on the pants and the cloth and the very sharpest edges of the um, armor. I'm also gonna paint in some little scratches on the armor as well while I'm doing this. Next, I'm gonna use Flayed One Flesh and I'm gonna just do my last highlight with this. Not going as far down on the uh, highlights on the pants and just making some little nicks and dings in the orange armor there. And lastly, I'm gonna wash all of that orange areas with Reichland Flesh Shade. Try not to let this pool too much on the flat surfaces, which has quite a few of the orange armor and the pants. But you can use um, water, to, a water bleh. you can use a brush with just some water on it to clean that up before it dries. That's it for orange, it's easy. Next is metallics. Now there's a, two ways to do this. There's the easy way and the hard way. I'm gonna start with the easy way. Base coat all your metallics black. Paint the metallics with gun gray and then highlight with chrome. I did this way for most of the tiny details such as the little skulls, the D rings on the armor. Um, a lot of the details on the grenade launcher I did that way. So you can see here just Paint them in, gun grey, then do a little highlight with chrome, give it a wash with null oil, if necessary, it's not always. The hard way is called True Metallic Metals, and here I'm putting down a wet layer of Abaddon Black. This is going to form the basis for my wet blending here. So I've got a nice wet layer of Abaddon Black there. What I'm doing is I'm loading up my brush with some Abaddon Black in a glaze-like consistency, and then putting a tiny, tiny, incredibly tiny tip of gun gray on the tip of my brush. I'm gonna place that where I want the brightest highlight and I'm gonna use a zigzag motion to kind of feather back the paint. And as you can see, as the, paint, the gun gray runs out, it starts transitioning into that black and you get a nice, nice fade there. Now, if it's not going as far up as you want, it's still quite wet and you can use wet blending techniques to try and push this up the, the ax blade and create a uh, brighter area that you want. And I basically use about four different techniques to paint all of this. I start with loaded brush to get the, the general area that I want. I then wet blend in order to get um, a slightly more precise and longer transition. And then I'll glaze in order to do the shadows and the highlights just to fine tune everything. So you can see here, I'm applying some gun gray. It's And before it dries, I'm gonna be using some water just to feather this out. So that's where I want my transition to be, my brightest area, and then just some water with a zigzag motion, just feathering out that paint before it dries. The model air paints are quite good for this because they actually dry quite slowly, so you've got a decent working time with them. And now I'm gonna be using some glazes. You can see I've thinned down my gun gray quite a lot. I've also added a little bit of matte medium, which makes it a little bit easier to control. And I'm just glazing from my shadows into the highlights there in order to smooth out some problem areas. Now this is a relatively time consuming process which is why I only did it on the axe, the axe and the greaves and the van braces. Things here, just a few glazes and it just makes everything nice and smooth. Now I'm using some glazes of black and I'm just reinforcing my shadow areas with that. And I didn't need to do this very much. And this is the same technique I used across the entire axe. So that the cylinder bits along the back of the axe, the blade of the axe, the whole axe was done using this technique. So 
the next step is to take some Gullum and Blue, and I'm just glazing that from the mid-tone into the shadows of my metallic areas. And that just gives it a nice kind of little blue tint. If you end up with what looks like it's going to be a tide mark, then just use some uh, water on a clean brush, and you can feather that back into the highlight area. An extra little detail touch is to take some scrag brown, thin it down with a little bit of matte medium and water, and just paint in some little rusty areas on there. I'm just making very, very small squiggles and kind of streaking lines, I'm just painting it into areas where rust might have gathered while the weapon was at rest, or if the weapon was improvised, from, for example, from something else, maybe they didn't clean all the rust off. It's quite a subtle effect, but it adds quite a lot of extra life to the model. Now I'm going to take some VMA Chrome and I'm just going to edge highlight all of those areas that I've done with True Metallic Metals, just to try and make sure that the edge is nice and sharp, because this is an axe after all, it would be sharp. It also lets me delineate the volumes and the shapes a bit better. And I'm going to also create a little, few little scratches down the cutting edge of the the axe there. Now I'm going to base coat all of the leather areas with Brinox Hide. I decided to only do the wrapping on the axe as leather and leave the straps as um, black, as if they were like a nylon or a synthetic mesh. Now I'm going to highlight that Rhinox Hide with Doombull Brown. Now because it's an axe haft, I'm actually doing it on the top, so top edge and feathering it out towards the side bit to reinforce the round shape of that cylinder. I'm going to take some flayed one flesh and I'm just going to edge highlight all of those wrappings. I'm actually, it's almost like dry brushing. I'm using the side of the brush and I'm very gently just letting the raised areas of the, the model pick up that paint. Now I'm going to take some null oil and just wash this over the leather areas. Now, this is quite specific to this model, but these are how I painted the grenade and the grenade launcher here. I started off by base coating it with um, model color Glorious Gold. I thinned this down a little bit because otherwise it might go on a bit too clumpy because it is quite thick. So I think it took about three coats to cover nicely. But better to put it on thin and smooth than it is to try and do it in one coat. Which, you could do it in one coat with this, but it goes on really thick if you do it that way. Once that was dry, I took some Reichland Flesh Shade and shaded all of the gold areas with that. Being quite generous with it, really. Once that was dry, I went back in with Glorious Gold just to re-highlight those areas because the wash will have given it a matte coat and made it quite dull and also tinted the top areas a little bit orange which I didn't want. I then went in with a mix of BMA Chrome and Glorious Gold, it's about one to one, and just started highlighting the top sides of those cylinder shapes. and then went in with my final highlight of just some pure VMA Chrome. And these are just some very fine line highlights along with the, air, the brightest part of the uh, grenades there. I then take that same VMA Chrome and paint in the warheads of the grenades. Making sure to leave a kind of little fine black line between all of the different parts. Final step, take some null oil, wash it into the grenades areas, make sure it doesn't pull too much on the top of the, the uh, grenades, and this gives you a nice amount of definition between all the different sections.
Next up is the skin. Now I started off by base coating all of the skin with Cadian Flesh Tone, which over black took quite a long time. It was about five different layers, thin layers, in order to get it smooth. Um, here I've actually done a highlight on it, but you don't need to worry about that. Just wash over your Cadian Flesh Tone base coat with some Reichland Flesh Shade in order to get yourself a nice dark recess. Um, it was while I was doing this that I realized that all of the careful uh, highlights I'd blocked in from the previous step would just be completely obliterated by the wash. That's why I'm not advising you to do it that way. Next, I'm taking Cadian Flesh Tone and Flayed One Flesh, and I'm basically just wet blending from the Flayed One Flesh in the highlight into the Cadian Flesh Tone. So I'm putting down some Cadian Flesh Tone one, while it's still wet, picking up a little bit of Flayed One Flesh with my brush, and wet blending that in on the top highlight. And I'll just keep doing this going back and forth on each muscle group. So I'll do one muscle at a time. So I'm just doing concentrating on the shoulder here. And then once I've got that how I like it, I'll go on to the next muscle and do that. Trying to do it all at once was difficult. It was a lot easier to do it one muscle at a time and just focus on that specific shape because muscle is essentially just a bunch of spheres crammed together. And as long as I was just focusing on that each individual shape, it was much easier. Eventually it works up to just applying pure flayed one flesh on the very brightest areas. And it's, um, it's a relatively organic kind of creative process. There's a lot of going back and forth. Occasionally you'll need to use a glaze of Cadian flesh tone in order to smooth out some blends or get a little bit darker where you want it. But the, you'll get there eventually and the result will be worth it. Now at this point I decided the model needed a bit of a spot colour, so I decided to go with turquoise. And I'm painting all of the little kind of serum pipes, because these guys use lots of combat drugs. So all of the pipes that are going into their body and the areas that look like they can their vials containing um, serum, I'm just base coating those all with Thousand Suns Blue. Yes, Thousand Suns Blue. Now this works nice as a spot color because it's opposite orange, blue, um, orange and teal are opposite like each other on the color wheel. So this works really nice as a spot color because it'll pop out quite nice. Now I'm using Araman blue in order to highlight the thousand tons of blue. It's very similar in color, but Araman blue's got a bit more green in it and it's a little bit lighter. Now I'm taking some Ulthron Grey and I'm mixing that in with my Araman Blue. It's about a 50-50 mix and I'm just creating another highlight with that. Just highlighting a much smaller area, again focusing on the uppermost surfaces of all of those pipes and vials. Now I'm adding a little bit more Ulthron Grey and I'm just creating another highlight and again doing it an even smaller area this time. Now this is kind of a finishing touch step. I'm taking some blood for the blood god on a bit of old sponge. And I'm just sponging that on areas where I want there to be some blood effects. So the axe seemed like a logical choice. And then put the model on the base. There's a separate video for the bases which will be appearing in the top right of the screen here. So there you go, there's your Goliath Ganger in their industrial orange and black uh, colors scheme, yes. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you paint your gang. Next up, later, eventually, will be an Escher Ganger. I'm sorry they're taking so long to get through these Necromunda miniatures, but I don't, I can't paint everything. But, although it says paint all the models, there's not enough time. Please like, share and subscribe and thank you to all of my patrons that made these videos possible and who voted for this over on patreon so that's it um bye